All right, Gunnar, we're rolling. Right on. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the weekly Mozilla WebMaker community call. It is great to see so many names in the Etherpad. Uh, let me draw your attention in said Etherpad, which is etherpad.mozilla.org slash OCT09, capital O, OCT09. Uh, let me uh, draw your attention to the line 83, where we've got the weekly blog posts, press, and other weekly updates. Um, I'm not seeing a new folks on the call. Oh, there it is up at line 63. Uh, is there anyone who is new on the call this week for the first time? If you are new, I wonder if you would be so kind as to hit star 7 and unmute and just say hello. And I will pause dramatically to see if anyone has a star 7 in them. Say hello if this is your first weekly call. I hear rustling. All right, well, we'll assume we're old friends on this call. Let's turn our attention to line 93, Mozilla Festival update. Oh my gee, it's only one month to MozFest. Michelle Thorne, please hit star 7 to unmute and tell us how exciting things are getting. Michelle Thorne, are you present? Are you wrestling with your unmute capability? All right. Well, I'm going to assume that Michelle got delayed at some point or another. Let's see what's down below as other stuff that we can be talking about. Um, all right. Uh, maybe does it work? Does it throw people off? Jess and Chris a and Kate, could we talk about the unified web maker? Because if we can, I'm going to turn attention to line 147 towards the unified web maker and invite Jess to hit star 7 and talk. Jess, Jess, paging Jess. Jess is saying, ah, one sec. Everyone should please play the Jeopardy game show theme music in their Hello. Head. Jess, bless you for stepping into a pinch. Sorry to get you on stage earlier than we had done in the dress rehearsal. Uh, tell us about a unified webmaker vision. So, um, I just want to take, do a double check. Kate seems to be here. Yes. <laughs> um, so in the past I've come to this call and talked about how we are working towards designing a more unified web maker. Concretely, this means a few things for us. It means, um, first of all, evolving the existing website to be a learning platform. It, secondly, it means unifying the UX. And thirdly, it means designing with our learners and rinsing and repeating. That's the iterative cycle there. Um, and I did a blog post about this, which I put in the Etherpad on now line 154. Um, but basically today what we're sharing with you is some of the work that is a direct result of this strategy. First, Kate and I are going to talk to you about um, a universal navigation that we are working on. And then Chris is going to show us the progress that he's made so far in designing um, a modular system for WebMaker badges. But while we're talking, it would be great if you could give us feedback in the Etherpad categories below that I have listed on line 157 to 169. The idea is that I stole this from Chloe who stole it from someone else, but basically the idea is that you list the awesome things in the green, the things that you're unsure about in the yellow, things that really don't work and why they don't work in the red. And blue is list the feature requests and things that we probably just don't have time for by most fest. <laughs> but um, just in reality, uh, it would be great. We're just trying to come up with systems for you to give us as much feedback as possible. So um, while we're starting, please take a look at um, – Kate, should we take a look at line 149? Can somebody confirm? that that is happening. I'm just going to go there myself. Hey guys, so we're going to take a look at the badges first on uh, line 152 there. Um, so if you click on the link there, you'll see the, the starting of uh, some thinking around the elements of a modular badge system. So I have some graphics there in terms of some early thinking about what a template could look like for the badges um, across the, the different properties there. So starting with the, the WebMaker badges, um, so a design like this allows for a lot of versatility. 
um, thinking about it sort of from a modular point of view, how, what things can change, what things stay the same to sort of create a sense of consistency across the, the experience. Um, so I have a few examples just down under sample variations, but the, the possibilities are sort of endless in terms of like the different combinations that we can come up with. So um, yeah, trying to create something that is sort of consistent, but also at the same time uh, very flexible, um, even including like photographs or animated GIFs or something like that in the, the middle of the graphic. Um, so yeah, we've, this is some early thinking. We're going to be producing the first batch this week, which will consist of HTML and CSS badges for symbol. Um, and we'll be focusing on producing some of the, the main graphics for that. Um, so yeah, this is some early thinking. It might uh, evolve a bit down the road, but any uh, feedback you guys have now would be helpful. So thanks. Yeah, so the badges like the universal nav, which we're going to see in a few seconds, are, are assets that are going to live across all of our WebMaker properties and tools. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, a part of our strategy is building with the community. And so the work that Chris um, Apple did, Appleton did came out of years of work that Carla, Erin, Brian, Sonny, and Mike, and the, the badges community have been doing. Um, and we, we have really Chris has really taken a lot of that brain power and harnessed that into a really amazing design. So I just want to take a few seconds um, for people to add feedback on that and confirm that Kate is, has landed. Okay. So should we go with the universal map? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the, um, the concept behind the universal nav is that a user will come to webmaker.org and have personalized and portable dashboard-like content avail available to them throughout their web making journey. Our first step towards that is implementing a navigation that's going to live across Thimble and Popcorn that incorporates some of this kind of functionality. And then we're going to use this as kind of a, um, a use case for us to then um, develop out the larger universal nav that we hope to live across all of the web maker properties with a single sign-on. So Kate, I'm going to let you take it away from here. Sure. Um, so the universal nav is based on a lot of work we did earlier with just kind of like the UX around what kind of um, early navigation could we introduce to Thimble and Popcorn. Um, but eventually it will be something that people will recognize as um, a universal sort of web maker. Um, they'll, they'll, univer they'll, they'll recognize it as uh, universally as what web maker is. So, um, I'll just show you an example of what it might look like um, in Thimble or Popcorn. And we sort of worked on it, um, you know, a very early version. So all it has is some links uh, to what's basically offered on OneMaker.org right now. Um, and it also has uh, some login information on the side that would have uh, badges in Thimble and not in Popcorn right now. Um, it would also have a link to feedback. So in Popcorn, I'll show you um, what that looks like. Yay. So in Popcorn, you can submit feedback um, like that. But eventually, we'd be able to have the same kind of language for feedback and uh, links across WebMaker in uh, Thimble and Popcorn, which would be really cool. So that's the first kind of prototype. And if you have any suggestions, it would be great if you want to give us feedback on that. Yay. So that's pretty much it, I guess. And there's a button on there for feedback as well? Yeah. Um, so the, the idea with feedback would be that um, you can actually submit feedback or bugs or ideas anywhere on WebMaker. So um, no matter where you are, you can actually uh, uh, sort of just give your ideas or thoughts in a way that's more kind of natural rather than having to find the individual bug tracking system for each product and you know, uh, figure it out individually. So, that's something we've been working on. Um, we definitely want feedback on the language and the wording and uh, how that would work for most of our users. So if you have feedback on that specifically, I think we definitely want to hear about that. And when you click on projects in the WebMaker app, what do you, where do you go? What do you, what do you see there again? So right now if you click on projects, you actually see um, just sort of like popcorn projects and thimble projects. Um, so right now they're actually external links because we were kind of going for what we could actually implement um, by the festival, but eventually this area would kind of be like a dynamic gallery or something like that um, where you could actually see all of your projects right there, 
no matter where you, you are. Down there. So right now, right. when you click on that, it takes you to the project page yeah. filtered by symbol or filtered by pop -up. Right. Cool. So right now, the navigation is. So the, the navigation items in the universal navigation map to the navigation on webmaker.org. So uh, projects, tools, and events. But eventually, with a single sign-on, we'll have the capability of doing some more interesting things and putting um, more dynamic information. So projects that are specifically projects that you are interested in or projects that you are making or um, you know, your events or your groups of people who you are connecting with or um, Various, various things that are, are way, way more personal. But for, as our first step towards that, we're just using our existing navigation, if that makes sense. Very cool. Nice. So if there's any questions or um, ideas for future features that you'd love to see here, please let us know. And the um, or voice right now. <laughs> but the way to stay involved and get in touch with us is really on IRC. We have the MoFo Design channel, and MoFo, hashtag MoFo Design. And then the second way is um, by continuing to contribute to our Pinterest mood board, which um, I put the link on line 193 in our Etherpad, which for me just disconnected, so maybe for you too. Um, <laughs> but right now, Doug Belshaw is on the top of our leaderboard for the most pins. But, uh, Competition is stiff, let me tell you. Right on. Thanks, Jess. And because we are now flying blind with an ether pad that has decided to go uh, haywire, uh, the line is open if people want to hit star 7 and ask any questions or raise any observations. That is most welcome. I think this is really fantastic design work and very excited to see it and really great to see people dig in the process in the chat channel. But does anybody have any comments? Star 7 to unmute. Hello there. I just wanted to let you know that if you are on the Foundation IRC channel, um, there is a link to the wiki. Uh, it is called the Backup Agenda. Um, it is not pretty, but we have a lot of material still in there from this call. Bless you for having a Plan Z. Love it. All right. Other feedback? Anybody moved emotionally to comment, critique, or otherwise contribute? to that which is being made vis-a-vis -vis WebMaker. All right. Well, we had to contact Scotland Yard, but we have located Michelle Thorne, and she has agreed to come out of hiding long enough to talk about how the festival is going. Michelle, do you want to hit star 7 and tell us a festival update to the best of your recollection as per Etherpad deprivation? Well, bless Rebecca for the backup. So she's got all my numbers in front of me. Um, so we actually have 599 people planning to come to MozFest, which means if you haven't yet registered for MozFest, you can do it now and be the 600th person to come and join us in London. Um, so it's a, re it's a really great turnout. Um, we're, we're excited with lots of um, people signing up, and, um, and thanks to everyone who helped with the outreach push. Um, we even got a tweet by Cory Doctorow, which I think probably single-handedly led to a lot of the sign-ups. Um, but yeah, keep spreading the word, and um, it will take us through our goal. Um, just an update on what we're doing for the next, uh, next few days. Um, we've got a lot of really great session data, and I know I owe a few people, including folks on this call, some news about their session proposal, so I'm sorry. I will get back to you soon. Um, ben and I are working through kind of a, some new participant user stories about the festival. So thinking about what is it like for a 15-year-old um, from Brighton to participate at the festival, what sessions would they go to, what's it like for an educator or a journalist, and try to map out their journey um, through MozFest and make sure they've got enough stuff that's interesting and exciting for them. And um, I think there was also something there before from Matt around uh, something he wanted to update people on, but I'm sorry I forgot it in the ether pad being down. Um, but we do have a cool ad coming out. The, um, one of the newspapers that sits in the London subway, the tube that people can read for free, has offered us a spot. So we've got a sneak peek of one of the ads that are going into that newspaper. And um, all in all, excited to see this stuff coming together, and a big thanks to people for 
their session data and sending stuff out in uh, four weeks and counting. Very exciting. Thank you, Michelle. Amazing to see those numbers. Anybody got feedback, questions? I know one question that has been raised, I think, by Brett in the um, IRC. Can you clarify what staff need to do to be fully guaranteed of having a space reserved on their behalf when they show up in London? Do they need to register? What, what, where can they access that link? Yada, yada, yada. And by space, are you talking about hotels or are you talking about a um, I will let you hack the question, but basically we've got a bunch of folks here that are uh, sort of foundation or MOSE affiliated, and I think sort of for all the demographics on the call, just letting them know how to confirm that they are registered would be awesome. Cool. Well, for folks to read their um, Mozilla staff emails, we'll note that we have asked you to sign up multiple times to our staff page, which means when you do that, we will have a hotel waiting for you. And even if you haven't, Mary has been so helpful and has helped us uh, <laughs> reserve rooms for the people we anticipate from staff to come and be there. Um, but if you are concerned that you are not being taken care of or have not signed up or registered, please email me and we will sort it out. So if I understand correctly, you're volunteering to type all their data into the registration form, which is really touching. Yeah. I, just really want to I know how to spell Brett. <laughs> nice. <laughs> love it. And we love you, Brett. Excellent. Any other questions for Michelle, feedback, comments? I would just give a major shout out to Michelle who is holding the weight of the Mozilla world on her festival shoulders. And to see 599 registrations, I just can't shout out props loud enough to Michelle and the whole core festival team. So congratulations on so much great progress. So Gunnar, Michelle, I have a question which is what, what happens if we look like we may go over 800? We set 800 as a sort of target goal. We're at 600 now. What, what happens if we go over? I think the hardest question is going to be figuring out which, which ticket site to let people um, you know, scalp tickets on. And so that, that's probably an unresolved technical issue we do need to get figured out. <laughs> and there's always the O2 next door, which I hear takes like 50,000 people. Right on. We're on a, a, a festival counter conference right next door at the O2. <laughs> Do you, um, do you guys no, have no. any non-joke <laughs> answers to that question? <laughs> Matt, I can't believe you're not satisfied with what you've already got. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I think we, um, I think we reevaluate. We see how many people we can actually put in the building and how many sessions we can have so that that people aren't in huge sessions. And if we, if it means bumping up the numbers to 900 or 1,000, maybe. Um, if not, we say well, you have to come up with a plan Z. Yeah, and I, I would add, I think, Matt, I think there's three categories of issues. Um, I think we definitely need to do some very intelligent modeling about the flakage factor because I think anybody who has not had to pay for their ticket and has said they're going to be there, I think there's going to be a pretty substantial um, attrition there. I think the biggest place that Michelle and I are stressing about logistically is as that number grows, the plenary space becomes more and more of a bottleneck. And so I think we're trying to figure out what are the practical limits in that plenary space. And then we're also doing some flow modeling so that at, I think, a few different thresholds. I know that we'll model at the sort of 600-ish and at the 800-ish level for how we see people flowing during the day. But we're trying to make sure that a lot of the, the agenda choreography is elastic enough to deal with a pretty healthy range of folks. Ben also technologically notes that ticket sales are capped. Ooh, no, that was Michelle noting that too, Ben. Any other comments or feedback about the festival before we move forward? Hey, hey there, Gunnar. Um, it's Rebecca. Hello. Hello. Um, I just wanted to say that there's a couple of updates to the Mo Mozilla Festival website. Um, on uh, line 139, there's a brand new, fresh and shiny um, bunch of content on the home page. So please tweet and tell people about it. Um, there's a pretty cool Who's Coming section that's evolving pretty nicely. And if you wanted to know why I was emailing the entire planet last week, um, you can take a look at the schedule 
uh, which is linked on line 142 of the Etherpad. And you can sort of see the difference between, um, you know, not to name names, Stan Sinker, but um, the election hacking session isn't as um, exciting looking as some of the other <laughs> sessions where we're. <laughs> <laughs> what we're trying to do is sort of um, take take all the hard work that that you and Michelle, everyone and Michelle has done um, preparing the sessions, getting them organized, and sort of make them face the public and show the public why they're so exciting and why they absolutely have to attend those sessions. So this process is ongoing. If you need any help with it, uh, Chloe, for example, uh, reached out to me today. I'm happy to work with Chloe and helping get those sessions online, looking really cool. Uh, if anyone else needs some help, let me know. That's all. Thank you, Rebecca, and thanks for rocking so hard on the website work. All right, any other feedback for the amazing Michelle and Festival team? Excellent. Well, let us move onward. Brett of Gaylor is on a quest, a quest for quality assurance. And Brett, I wonder if I can invite you to hit star 7 and tell us about the popcorn maker, quality assurance, contributors wanted. Hi, Gunnar. Hey, Brett. Um, I'm so glad the Etherpad is back up so I can fix my typos. Um, and I'd like to ask folks to also join me there. Um, essentially, we're, we're coming to the Popcorn Maker 0 0.9 this week, which will be um, the release where we, all the bugs that we know about we, we will have squashed. And so we're, we're trying this week to find bugs we don't know about and to fix them in time for the festival. Um, oh no. It Kate pinged me, but I'm going to ignore it. Um, so <laughs> Well, I don't understand your question, um, so I'm going to keep going here. Um, so yeah, this week we really need help from, from you folks, from people that really aren't on the Popcorn Maker team that look at this thing every single day and may have not noticed a, a bug that you would notice if you ran through some paces with it. Um, so I've created um, uh, a wiki page that simply links to a Google Doc. And in this Google Doc, there's about 15 tasks that we would assume um, an everyday um, web aspiring web maker would have to go through in order to make something with Popcorn Maker. Um, this, this is sort of the, the easiest and, and most low friction way we can think about. But if you have any uh, feedback on this process, it's certainly welcome. Uh, but essentially, it's a, as I said, it's a Google Doc with 15 tasks. We give you what, what these tasks are and the expected results when you go through them. And we're, what we're hoping that uh, some of you folks might be able to tell us is if you um, encountered an unexpected result, so a bug or something that didn't work as it was described. So this is, it's, this is different than, than user testing where we're, we're giving you sort of unstructured, in, in user testing we might give you unstructured tasks and tell you something like, um, you know, make, Make a newscast or something that was that was sort of free flowing. But in this one, we have really specific things that we want to test out with you. Um, so if you are able to join us in this, it would be extremely valuable. Um, so in, what I'm asking is in line 208 of this Etherpad, if you can just jot down your name. Laura is the first brave soul to do that. Um, if there are folks on this call who uh, who aren't regular Mozilla staffers, especially that this is something that you could really do uh, to pitch in with the WebMaker effort, and we would really sincerely appreciate it. This would be a, a huge uh, boon to not only the Popcorn team, but generally across WebMaker as we figure out how to, to do this QA with our community. We, we think this is a real uh, strength that we have on Mozilla and, and something that we, we can leverage to, to do great things. So. Um, you can write your name down there if you have any uh, additional. Yes, very tweetable. Um, Steve, thank you. This would be a great chance to, to get to know Popcorn. Um, if you have any questions, you can fire at them in, in the notes here. But we've tried to make this as straightforward as possible. Uh, and we'll probably be doing this for uh, the next several weeks. We do have a 0 0.9 release um, this Thursday. Um, but we'll continue doing this uh, right up until the festival, I imagine.
Thank you, Brett. Anybody else have any feedback? Anybody else want to volunteer? Any clarifying questions about exactly what you're signing up for? Right on. Well, Brett, thank you very, very much. And uh, Brett, I'll hit you in a back channel. I've got an interesting uh, QA option that I'd love to talk to you about. There's a very interesting organization in San Francisco that might want to volunteer to help with that. Cool. Thanks, Gunnar. Absolutely. Hey, let me turn everybody's attention to line 237, and let me invite everyone to savor the existence of line 237. Oops, 238. Oops, 238. Uh, while we still have it, the Etherpad being up as it has been for 10 whole minutes now. Chloe, sister of the Hackable Games cult, tell us what is going on in terms of the Games Arcade at MozFest. Hello. Can you guys hear Hello. me? Hello. We can hear you perfectly with high fidelity. Great. So the moment we have all been waiting is here. Um, just to give you a brief Hackable Games update and let you know of all the great things we are doing at the Game Arcade at MozFest. Um, and then make a call to action to help us spread the word. So what's happening is that we're going to have two, day, two days of game demos, learning labs, and design challenges, showcasing the latest and most hackable um, web game technology. And they're also going to be like real-size hackable games, arcade made out of cardboard, just, just letting you know. Um, so where this is hack happening, there is a hackable game track. I've put the link on two four, line 244 so you can share that with people and invite them. And it's going to be happening on Saturday and Sunday. We're still like, figuring out the scheduling. Um, and what I wanted to share was a really, really exciting lineup of attendees. And given that we've done a three-week recruitment on this, it's kind of amazing to see this massive response. So we have a quite diverse lineup of attendees um, ranging from Mozilla uh, peeps who are going to like running a mega session around building hackable games. There's a bonus item on line 250, which is our first hackable punk prototype and symbol. You guys can check it out. Um, and then um, other than that, we have uh, paper prototyping, so Game Design 101 hackable games um, that are made out of paper, but we also have uh, lovely games made um, uh, without graphics from uh, Werewolf uh, Master Dan Swalch. Uh, uh, if I pronounce the name correctly. Uh, we also will have a bunch of people ranging from uh, Mind Candy uh, to like the guys behind Gaming Labs doing uh, HTML, HTML5 um, hacking games, uh, as well as people uh, from scratch doing stuff with Symbol. But also um, we will have the folks from Crafty. Um, we will have people from Minecraft EDU. And some surprises, we can't really announce it yet, but it uh, looks like we're going to be having Media Molecule join us and Little Big Planet doing some um, hacking of Little Big Planet, um, as well as a bunch of, of fire fireside chats, including Zombies Run and um, other interesting conversations. So there are three easy and playful steps to get involved on line 291. Uh, so the first one would be to invite your gamer, gamer folks um, any list that you have. Just invite them to come to MozFest. We're really looking for people to come and join these, these, these various sessions, uh, ranging from developers to designers to youth to volunteers. So we will need a bunch of volunteers to help us out um, during the game arcade. And then you can also join us at the Hackable Games channel on IRC. And uh, our weekly calls are every Wednesday at 12 Eastern Time, 5 British Time, 9 Pacific Time. And the link for that is right there. And that was it for me. <laughs> thank you, Chloe. And thank you for all that great update and for making a very concrete and exciting plan out of a very large and amorphous deliverable. So super, super exciting. Really, really good names to see and very very excited to see how that makes the uh, energy at this year's event much more creative and shall we say playful. Any feedback for Chloe? You're getting a lot of love in the IRC. Any other calls or questions? I'm scrolling down to see if anybody's placed anything, but I'm not seeing anything there. Excellent. Okay, so I do encourage people to be shooting your feedback to Chloe. She is trying to really make the hackable games the most it can be as we try to get folks excited. Let me turn your attention to line 300, the call for help looking for webmaker slides. Henrik, star 7 to unmute. Would you be so kind as to tell us about your search? Hey, Gunnar, Hi. I think Henrik mentioned that he wasn't going to be able to uh, participate voice-wise. Uh, oh, okay, cool. Do you want to take that one, Matt? 
No, I think he's actually got there's lots of links and answer to his question there. So I think I think Hendrick's probably probably pretty well covered. Got it. Well, that is good to know. And with that, my friends, we are moving toward nonverbal updates. The floor is open if anybody wants to bring up an item or otherwise draw attention to anything that has not yet been covered on today's call. Pausing dramatically. Excellent. Well, friends, we are at the nonverbal update section of today's call. Let me draw your attention to all the items from line 325 onward. And I believe we may just be wrapping up this weekly call early. Matt, anything you would like to add before we draw to a close? I don't think so. I'm just wondering if Ben Simon wants to do a quick update on uh, our first MozFest contest winner, line 334. Am I audible? You are now audible, Benjamin of Simon. All right. Um, so I don't have much besides what's uh, written in the pad, but we, uh, the first winner of, our, of our, one of our two slots for uh, the MozFest con contest uh, was randomly chosen over the weekend. And uh, his name is Pulkit Sethi. Uh, he's a software developer from Washington, D.C. Um, and he's actually um, really interested in our stuff and was like, would have been really excited to have come to MozFest anyway, but you know, didn't have the money to lay out for a trip to London. Um, and so it's, it's actually a, a pretty um, serendipitous winner, I'd say, as, a, as opposed to just being somebody who signed up for the free trip to London. Um, and he's very interested in a bunch of our initiatives and um, in fact attended a some sort of a summer code party-like event in Washington where he first heard about uh, MozFest. Um, it's unclear if it was actually focused on web making or if it was focused on uh, learning to graffiti, um, but uh, either way. Um, and he's sending more, more info uh, that we can use to describe him and his motivations accurately. Um, and so, uh, Oh, once, once I have that, uh, there will be a blog post that we can uh, point people to if we want to tell that story over social media. Um, and there will also be a bit about him in the next promotion we're doing over email, uh, which is going to be early next week about the contest. Um, and then also on 341, there are the top line results so far for the contest, which is almost 11,000 total entrants um, and a little more than 2,000 uh, donating entrance, which is of course our preferred method of um, people entering the contest. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. My pleasure. Wow. And for those that aren't paying attention, there's wows going on around the 11,000 entries in the uh, IRC. Okay. Beautiful people. Anything else that should be verbal before we move to the adjournment state of existence? Well, with that, again, MozFest is exactly one month away. Can't wait to be sharing space with all of you fine people in a place called London and a time called MozFest. In the meantime, have a great week, everyone, and we will see you back here, same time, same channels, hopefully more stable, next week for the Mozilla Weekly Webmaker Community Call. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week. Bye. Bye, Gunner. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Please stand by.